in the Fate Zero adaptation, we were able to get a sample of just how monstrous Kirei Kodamine can actually be. And in a futile attempt to escape his madness, Irisville made use of her own magecraft and tried to slow him down by binding him to a nearby tree. Moments later, this dude was able to snap the entire tree in half like a pencil with his physical strength alone. What? Now at this point, Irisville was probably thinking, uh, sir, I'm gonna need you to put that tree back where you found it because there is no fucking way you should be that strong. But taking a deeper look at it, I think Kirei was able to accomplish this feat due to the body conditioning of his fighting style, the Baji Shwan. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So in the Fate world, Kirei utilizes a style known as the Super Baji Shwan, which is a combination between regular Baji Shwan and Magecraft. Now, there's a lot of discussion on where the style originated, but the general consensus is that it comes from the notable martial artist, Zhang Wu. One day, Zhang, who was only 15 years old at the time, was outside in his courtyard, you know, chilling, minding his own business. All of a sudden, a Taoist monk jumped off of his roof, landed in front of him, and started doing these strange moves that he had never seen before. Of course, Jong is thinking, you have to teach me the method of your ways. So the monk kicked it together with Jong, training for approximately 10 years. During this time, he taught Jong everything he knew, and these same moves later became known as the Baji Shuan. But Jong couldn't just let these moves go to waste, so the style was then passed on from generation to generation to preserve its incredible nature. Now, one of the people that made the style popular, and it's someone that's also a servant in Grand Order, was the fifth generation Grand Master, Li Shu Wen. See, after John was finished training with the monk, he received a guide that went into even more hidden secrets on this style. And one of these secrets was practicing with the spear. The reason being is that Baji Shuan originated from spear techniques. So when you improve with the spear, you also improve in your Baji Shuan. And it was such an important aspect that anytime Li Shuen got out of bed at night, he would not go back to sleep unless he did 50 spear reps on the spot. As a result, he later earned a new title with the weapon as God Spear Li. Now, doing all these spear repetitions might sound like it's a bit much, but it paid off tremendously when you consider that using this same style, Lee has never lost a battle in his entire life. The closest he's come to a loss is a draw, and generally speaking, he's never had to hit his opponent twice. The style was so efficient that one of Lee's students ended up becoming a bodyguard instructor for a number of Taiwanese officials. And from that point, it was designated as a bodyguard style since it held the power to eliminate potential threats like no other. Even the final emperor of China had his bodyguards trained in this same style. From the nation of Taiwan, Baji Xuan began to branch its way out to other locations and eventually the entire world. When you take this into account, Lee's involvement is one of the main reasons that the art has survived to this day. Originally, Baji Xuan was known as Bazi Fist, which literally means rake fist since you would hold your fist in the form of an actual rake. Eventually, people deemed that the term Bazi was kind of unrefined and they decided to replace it with Baji since it pays more respect to the philosophy behind it. The new name of the style in full is called Kaimen Baji Shuan. Kaimen stands for opening the gates. And these gates often refer to the eight striking points on your opponent's body. The philosophy behind the term Baji can be applied to multiple things. But in this context, it means the eight extremities, the eight points of the body that you would use for an attack. 
So the same way that you have eight striking points on someone else's body, Baji emphasizes that you must also express the same power from all eight directions of your own body. To understand that your power is universal, that your entire body is a weapon itself and no part of it should be taken for granted. And of course, the Quan stands for fist or boxing. The reason that Baji Swan is so useful is because it gets straight to the point. Contrary to these fighting styles that focus on moves that are aesthetically pleasing, Baji Swan is explosive, short range, and meant to take out the target as quick as possible. Instead of damaging the outside of the body, you're going straight for attacks that would affect their internal organs. Before you can even get that far, first you gotta get in the opponent's grill. And the way that you do this is by using one of the big openings, which is something that we saw Kira use in his battle against Maya. Using one of these same techniques, Kira was able to make his way into Maya's guard elbow her in the chest and successfully break some of her ribs in the process. Not to mention, she was using a knife and a gun. And she's an ex-military soldier. Another time we see his skills at use is when he fought against Kiritsugu. Kire slid into Kiritsugu with the inverse moving stance, then finished him off with a vertical punch to the chest that damaged his heart and his lung. The biggest boost in power in Baji Swan comes in when you mix it with your internal arts. Before you deliver your hit, you initiate a stomp to gain energy, contract your lower muscles, then send that life force through the limb of your choice to amplify the strength behind it. Once you have good balance, weight distribution, and body rotation, you will not only see an increase in damage, but you will also send a shockwave through your opponent's body. Now, let's put this into perspective. The novel says that this punch alone was like a grenade exploding in Kirisugu's chest. I'm not sure what's more impressive, the punch or the fact that he survived it. Cause you gotta think, Kirisugu was already dying from the fight itself, just from using his time altar. Sure, he had Avalon, but he still had to endure all that internal damage. But yeah, there are several other forms and styles that mix in with Bajishwan. For the most part, I just wanted to highlight some of the things that we saw from Kirei. I do wish there were more events where he could have showcased these skills, or maybe a circumstance where they could have given us more fist fights in general, since they're just amazing anyway. Going back to the first part of the video, it's a common practice for Baji Shuan users to hit trees or concrete as a way to toughen their body. So with Kirei being skilled in the craft and adding his own mage craft to the mix, it was nothing for him to pull that tree out the way. That about wraps it up. If you enjoyed the video, please like it up so we can get this trending. Feel free to add information as you see fit and let me know what you guys think about it. It's your boy Saya. I'm out.